friends thank you for joining me today a little something different here I am going to be a guest at one of these social places where people gather to, who are not artists to come and paint now in our part of the country they're called the most common one is wine and design there's all kinds of them all over the country and uh, I've done this these are her friends of mine uh, hi Craig and Marianne <laughs> if they weren't friends, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> but it actually brings up another point. What, what is a serious artist like me doing messing around with silly things like, you know, very lowbrow, non-artsy things? That's a good question. <laughs> Let me talk about that for just for a minute before I get started. Should an artist like myself, should we in fact be involved in such silly shenanigans I, I think of my my heroes you know some of the oil painters of America type people would they I ask myself would they ever lower themselves to do something like this would G Harvey ever, ever do this <laughs> my guess is a very strong no but then again he's got his life I've got mine um, j just a word for what it's worth. Um, how to say this? N not bragging, but I'm happy. I'm pleased that last year, now who knows what will happen this year, but that doesn't matter. Last year I was named the number one artist in, in the Triangle. That's Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. By the only organization, of course, that has the nerve. You know the kind of, the kind of magazine that names the best sushi and the best wine and the best brewery and the best artist okay so i was named the best artist i i it, believe me it's not going through my head although i am pleased you understand i want to talk why was i named such a thing because i'm the best dog honest in, artist in town maybe i am but maybe i'm not probably i'm not <laughs> what am i I will say this, and, and I'm thinking here about perhaps some of you who are artists, especially if you're young. You have to participate in the community. In my mind, that is huge, and that's why I was named the number one artist, because I'm there. There are some other artists in town who have every reason in the world to say I'm better than Dan Nelson. There are. But they don't play. I don't mean, anyway, I'm getting too far. That sounded like an accusation. That, that's not what I meant. Um, but I'm everywhere, and I do everything. I participate with the community. Um, in fact, for me, teaching classes is mostly that. It's just participating in the community. It's what you do. It's a li I'm not rich, but in my impression is it is what most wealthy people do in a community. The good, wealthy people in the community they're the ones that are at all these fundraisers that I go to, you know, paying money for things they don't need to support very good causes. That's what people of means do. And people with my kind of means, what do we do? We participate in the community. Okay, I felt like that was worth saying for some of you. I hope it was. All right, let's get legal. Daily Art Adventure number 553. I call it party painting. <laughs> Take one. <laughs> That's because, I call it party painting, it's actually wine and design, but I think that that might be uh, a copyrighted, I'm sure it's a copyrighted name, so I don't want to use wine and design in my title. All right, I have a couple of purposes for this particular video. One is I just want to share it with you guys, my normal viewers. The other is I'm going to actually edit this video to, to show to the people when I, uh, on the night, a couple weeks or a month from now when I do this painting for them. Does that make sense? So a little bit different parameters. And once I start painting today, I'm not going to talk to you guys. I'm going to talk to my wine to design friends. Okay? 
starting when? Starting about now. Oh, I'll show you first. Here's here's my go buys. This is actually an excerpt from one of my regular paintings off my website. The Craig over at Wanted Design, he found this and edited it. This is my real quick Photoshop uh, simplification of that. And this these black lines is that's what's on my canvas right now. All right, let's get started then. The first thing we're going to do, and we're going to do this, try to do this fairly quickly, using a brush this big, chip brush, and that's been dipped in water. So it's, as you can see, it's pretty wet, it's dripping. The first thing we're going to do is cover the entire painting, the entire canvas, with white acrylic. Okay, working very quickly. Just slap it down. If you need to dip your brush in water again to keep it wet, feel free to do that. Just cover the whole canvas as quickly as you can <laughs> using either hand. <laughs> Both hands is preferable. A bit more water. I really, I really want it kind of runny. And as you can see, it's still quite easy to see the black lines. That's why we did this time. Why we did the black lines in Sharpie marker. Okay, so I'm just taking a second just to even out that paint over the whole canvas. Okay, now without pausing, I'm going to dip just one tiny corner of my brush, like that much. See, into blue. Okay. And then I'm going to come up here and don't color in the lines. Just give that whole thing a, a pale blue cast. Okay. I'm going to dip my brush in water again. And I'm going to dip it in blue again. You with me? About that much. And then paint the bottom. So the first thing we did is cover the entire paint in more water. I want this to be quite damp. If I had a spray bottle, that would be perfect, but I'm not sure that Wine & Design has a spray bottle. So we'll just dip our brush when we need it. So the first thing we did is cover the canvas with white. The second thing we did was paint a little bit of blue into that so that we have a very tiny bit of tint of blue over the whole thing. Now I can't stop and talk because I want to keep this thing wet. Whoops, I just got a hair on my, I wonder whose hair that is. I wish I had hair that long, but I don't. <laughs> okay, next thing I'm gonna do is dip a corner of my brush, even smaller this time, a smaller dip into brown. Can you see how little that is? What a tiny amount of brown that is? About a pinhead. And I'm going to come up here and paint approximately where these buildings are. Can, you can see you can still see those lines. We just want, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be a sharp edge. In fact, a fuzzy, soft edge is actually better than a hard edge. Okay, we're done with that. Now, dip my brush in water again. Pick up some more white, and this time, pick up green a little bit more. How to measure? How do we measure that? You see how much I picked up there? And this time, I'm going to go ahead and mix it a little bit on my plate. A little bit of green. And let's add a little bit of blue to that. Okay, so about that much blue. There we go. That's, that's the color I'm looking for. And now we're going to do these trees. And now, you can see I'm sort of dabbing my brush a little bit. Not just making big smooth marks, but dabbing them. And notice I'm not being terribly careful at the bottom of this area, I'm not being careful to go around the lines. Just in fact, let it blend in. Now, while I've got that blue, I don't, I'm colorblind by the way. <laughs> while I've got that green on my brushes, now vertical strokes, vertical, straight up and straight up and down, straight up and down, right about this part. What we're painting right now is reflection. All right, let's do just a little bit more. Here's what I'm gonna do this time. 
pick up a little bit more green. That's what I call a little bit more. Can you see that? And a little bit more blue. About that much. Mix those together and, and then say, oh no, too much blue, not enough green. Can you see that? So I'm picking up more green. As artists, we are allowed to change our minds. Now I have a slightly darker green. And the, the, the main light source, even though it's a cloudy day, the light's sort of coming from the right. So I'm going to take this slightly darker green color and imagine that the light is hitting these trees up this way. So this part of the tree, the lower, the lower left part of these trees is in shade, therefore slightly darker. Does that make sense? Again, painting quite quickly and don't worry about covering up that stuff down there. And then while I've got that color on my brush, Again, vertical strokes, because this is reflection on the wet street. Did I tell you we're painting a wet street? <laughs> I think you figured that out. All right. Now, we're going to pause right there and let this dry for a minute. It's been really hard to work this fast. And I'm going to take, take just a few seconds now, let this dry. I'm going to pause this broadcast and be back in just a minute. Thanks for watching. All right, <clears throat> welcome back. Thank you for joining me again. Um, I'm, I'll tell you guys <laughs> that I'm in a bit of a pickle. I'll edit this part out of my video. Uh, either I have to start all over or I'm gonna throw these people a curveball. I'm gonna start by trying to throw them a curveball. Uh, what happened here is that this ended up covering up more of the ink lines than I thought it would. And I'm afraid my, my painter party people are going to have a cow when they get this far. Now I can, you probably can't see it. Zoom in as much as I can. You probably can't see these lines. I could barely see them. And of course, some of the students there at the class will, will have even heavier paint than this. So I'm, I'm, that's why I'm making this up. But I'm wondering, how about if I say to them, I want you to paint like Dan Nelson. <laughs> They're already gonna be told that anyway. I'm sort of a special guest. And how about if I say, and Dan Nelson uses pencils. So here's what I want you to do. While you can still barely see these images, I want you to redraw them and of course, that will take some instruction on my part and will take a little bit of time. So I'm not sure that's a great idea, but let's, let's proceed along those lines and see if we can actually make this work. Now, of course I will, oh, I should be, oh, I am recording. Okay, I'll just take all this audio out. <laughs> I was gonna say I should be recording this. Oh, I am recording. What am I saying? So now let me start talking to them. So all of these little figures, the secret with each one is to keep it simple. Do not slip into the trap of getting too detailed. Now here's one poor fella that's out in the rain without an umbrella. Now we're not going to draw these lines up here. They're fine just the way they are. But before these disappear, and here's a real secret. I want you to make these marks sort of as messy as possible. You see how I'm holding the pencil, and most of you are going to hold your pencil this way, and that's probably all right. In this, in this one evening, I probably can't dissuade you from holding the pencil in that traditional manner. But you'll notice that I'm holding my pencil side saddle, and it really does help to make it a little bit more, a little bit looser. Okay, so now we've scribbled in. In fact, if you want to really act like Dan Nelson, you actually take your pencil before you're done and just do a few random scribbles like that that have nothing to do with anything. But you have to do them in that loose and, and very l light way or it won't, won't look good. All right, now I need some more white on my palette. 
So let's do that. I think I can do it right here without messing it up too much. <laughs> come on, white. Come on, white. There we go. All right. And now we're going to graduate to a more normal size brush. And we can use just plain white for this, I believe. And I'm basically going to paint all of these shapes. Now I'm being kind of careful, as you can see, kind of careful to paint in the lines. We're going to paint all the light shapes, I should say, not all the shapes. We're going to paint all the light shapes, which is mostly the umbrellas. And the canopies. This scene is actually an art festival in the rain. Um, I don't know how many of you go to these outdoor, you know, downtown art festivals. But one thing I've participated in a lot of them, and one thing I've learned is that the organizers can't control the rain. <laughs> so they're kind of stuck with whatever they get. Okay. Let's see, what else do we need? Do we want dark? I'm just going to make sure. That, I mean light. I, I said dark, I meant light. Uh, in between these little figures up here, paint some light there. So you're not painting the people, you're painting in between the people. And just drag your brush down, as you see I'm doing right there, straight down and let it fade out, so to speak. Got it? Let's do the same thing over here. Don't paint the people, paint around the people. And don't be too careful. Let it be a little bit messy. Many of you think that good artists have extreme control of their hands. Well, I'm here to tell you, art does not reside in the hands. It resides in the brain. <laughs> and um, you do not have to be extremely uh, control-handed uh, to be good artists. Okay, now, this is beginning the fun part right here. We're going to take this this brush that has white paint on it put it right about here we're going to paint the reflection of this first just plant your brush like this and drag drags you can do it slowly if you want straight down and let it fade out see you should have just enough paint now let's not make all of our stripes the same width so this time you see it's a flat brush but i'm going to put it on its edge same thing drag down and fade out. Let's do another one. Uh, right over here, same thing, the edge of the painting. I mean, I mean the edge of the brush, not the edge of the painting, okay? And just let it fade out, just like that. Now, let's do flat of the brush and overlap with that last stroke. And let's make this one just a little bit shorter. Is that making sense to you? So that's going to become, there's going to be a lot of this in this painting eventually. That's the, the beauty of this painting is going to be reflection in the rain, reflection on the street. Okay, I'm going to pause right there very briefly. I'm going to rinse out this brush. Never leave your brush sitting in the water. Very quick break. And be back just in, in a minute to... All right, welcome back. Now I'm picking up, again, even smaller brush. So this is, the last brush I used was about a half inch, a number eight flat. This is a number, oh, the numbers are worn off, but a number six filbert. And I intentionally picked up a brush that's not in very good shape, okay? Because I don't want you to think that you have to have a really good brush to do this, you don't. In fact, for some of you, a good quality brush would mess you up because the, the low quality brush will actually make you paint in a looser manner. All right, we're going to mix a little bit of paint here again. This is going to be a little bit tricky. You ready? We're going to mix three colors. White, blue, and brown. We don't know how much of each of those. 
and it's okay if everybody has a slightly different color, but what I'm after actually is a mid-tone gray, a medium gray. How many of you knew that if you mix blue and brown, you get gray? Well, you do, okay? And it's got enough white in it to make it opaque. All right, now, we're going to paint these figures, these people, with just a stroke. First of all, a stroke for the head, now, <laughs> listen to me, I implore you, <laughs> in the name of all that is artistic, <laughs> that you not make bobbleheads. Resist the temptation, I need a piece of scrap paper here, resist the temptation to, if you think you're painting a head, some of you will do this, behold the tongue. because you think that's a head. Okay, that is not a head. Oh my goodness, do not do that. Okay, instead, you just want to do a single stroke down. Let me talk to you like an art teacher for a minute. For the rest of your life, <laughs> if, you will, if you want to draw a person, if you will think of the head more like the shape of a brick, I mean a, a brick, a house, building, brick, paving, brick, brick, on end. Think of it that way instead of a ball. You will be instantly a better artist. So no more bobbleheads, bubbleheads, balloon heads, brick heads. <laughs> That's right. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all the heads here. Just a little dash. Just a little smudge. Don't make it too neat. Those of you who will mess up, forgive me, the, those of you who may mess up in this part, it'll be because you want to get it perfect. Try to resist the temptation to be perfect. Abstract smudges are far superior to accurate, uh, accurate rendering. Okay, now I've, I've used up a, a, enough of that paint. I'm going to mix up a little bit more. Okay, so white brown and blue, and it doesn't matter if it's not exactly the same color you had earlier. We're going to add color to these figures later, but first we're just going to do um, the figures themselves. Let's start with the same guy here, the, the, one, the one without an umbrella. This is not an umbrella, by the way. That, I, that's a little confusing. That's actually a, a canopy behind him in the distance. Okay, so the trunk single stroke single stroke for the a leg and let the let the legs just fade out you don't really have to put feet on these people and we could give this guy a little bit of an arm there we go now this figure right here she's holding her umbrella so make kind of a triangle or a gumdrop shape let me look for scrap paper again let me let me draw what i mean by a a gumdrop. That's a, that's a gumdrop. It's almost a triangle with the top rounded off. That's what I just painted for her. Actually, it's her arms kind of folded across in front of her holding the umbrella. And then just straight down from there, straight down. Now, in order to indicate hips, you just let push your brush down so that it widens out a little bit and then drag straight down and, and let your brush run out of paint. See, let it just fade out. Same thing over here. Push down so we get a little bit of a bump. See right there? See that right there and right there? And that's good enough. We can, we can fix her figure a little bit more later if we want to. Okay, this guy, this is a man. We just make him a block shape, torso, with two legs. Now, so far, I didn't realize this that all of the figures I've done so far have all had two legs. That's going to change here right now. This is a woman, I believe, because he's, it's, this figure is shorter. And then one leg this time, not two, just one, and fade out there. Let's go over to this one. Rectangle, leg, leg. Now this guy, he's walking this way. So you can actually see his feet a little bit. That might be a dangerous thing for us to do, but... And here's an arm sticking out front. 
Let's do this little kid. He's basically a star shape. Do you see that? Except this arm of the star is pointing up. This one is real short, and these two are made closer together. So there's a little kid pointing off that way. Do you see that? Now these figures over here have one leg each. <laughs> That's because they're standing profile to us. They're facing each other. So when we look at them here, we don't see two legs. We just see one. Same thing here, just one leg. See, these people are further away. So they're a little bit more abstract than these figures here. Now, let's, what should we do? One or two leg on this guy? Usually pronounced two legs, I know. Yeah, let's give him a slight indication, or her, I don't know. We can't tell. <laughs> now, do this. Would you take this brush that's still got this gray paint on it and rinse it off in your water? Not completely, just a couple swishes. Does that make sense? So now it's really wet. And start with a leg and come down. Leg, come down, and then just fade out like that. I'm going to grab a bit of a rag. Ah, no, it's okay. I just use my thumb and make that fade out a little bit more. Can you see what's going on here? Now this one, same thing, two legs and then just fade out. If you want to use a rag to help it fade faster, that's legal. Two legs and then a torso. And here's another person and they both just fade out. The beauty of this painting is going to be the reflection. Two legs, torso. Now, should we try to do that arm? You could if you want to, but I'm not inclined to. But that ha accidentally turned out so well. I'll leave it like that. Okay, leg number one. We're, we're essentially writing the, the letter Y. Have you figured that out? and then just let it, the stem of the Y fade out. Isn't that cool? Now you might need to add a little bit more water. These figures up here, they're just a single stroke. Same thing here. For those of you tuning in late here, what I'm doing here is developing a, a, a paint along painting for one of those social, it's called wine and design around here. So I'm going to be leading people in this step by step. And I'm hope, hoping it's simple enough that non-artists can follow along. All right, I'm gonna take a very short break because I'm taking pictures at the end of each phase, each stage of the painting process. I wanna take a picture of this and be back in just a minute. All right, let me take a second and talk to you, my live broadcast friends. By the way, thank you guys for letting me know that my microphone was not <laughs> plugged in earlier. Sorry about that. <coughs> Again, I'm doing this for a, an, a, a business called Wine and Design, where people paint their, pay their 20, 25 bucks and come in and non-artists and paint long step by step by step by step. So I'm, I'm recording. Uh, not this, not this part right here, I'll edit this out, but I'm recording my, my painting and then I take a picture at, at the end of each phase and with, these, with this video, I'll help lead people through the process. So that's what going on, what's going on here for those of you who might have missed the very beginning of this video. And I, uh, I'm making up partly as I go, you, you can probably tell. All right, let's start teaching again. All right, friends, it's time for some more large area painting. Back to our big brush, dip it in water, and we want to mix up some of this basically the same exact gray. Now, if you're like me, the gray you mixed up earlier is all dry. So with, a, with your damp brush, with your, careful how you say that, with your damp brush, <laughs> 
pick up some white, some blue, and some brown. By the way, there will be a lot more colors in this painting before we're done, but all of this underpainting. So we want a pale gray. Now, before I start painting, I'm going to dip this brush very carefully, very quickly in water one more time. Quick dip. All right, now, this is asphalt. This is street. This is pavement. Here's the edge of the sidewalk. I'm going to run my brush along the edge of the sidewalk and then brush all this. Now, do you see how, because my brush is so wet, all of that gray is just running down which is exactly what I want it to do. In fact, I'm going to pick up a little bit more because I want it to be darkest. So when a, when a street is shiny, wet with rain, the closer the street is to your feet, the more pavement you see. In other words, the darker it becomes. The further away it becomes, the more it just reflects the atmosphere and the sky and everything behind it. Does that make sense? And that gives us a little bit of a distinction between the sidewalk and the street. Now let's 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 get a slightly smaller brush. This one. Mix up a little bit more gray. Again, I'm calling it gray, but it's brown and blue and white. I want it just a little bit darker than what we used just a minute ago. Doesn't matter if it's not darker, but close. Can you see that? All right, and I'm going to paint now with this. I'm going to paint the, the gutter, if you will, the boundary between the street and the sidewalk. Now, if you're like me, that's a little bit too dark. We paint with rags a lot around here. Pick it up. And don't scrub, just rub. Don't scrub. Just one swipe like that. Oh, then I, then I scrubbed, didn't I? But not like this. I'm going in a direction consistent. There. That's probably all we need to do to indicate the street and the edge of the sidewalk. Everything else speaks for itself. Now, I'm trying, I'm debating whether we pause there. Yep, I am. I'm going to stop right there and do a real quick break. Oh, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I told you I'm making this up as we go. I, uh, back to gray again. I want this to be a little bit darker down here at the very bottom. Still painting with a very wet brush. I, don't, I certainly don't want a line like that. That's too dark. Can you see? Don't panic. Just dip your brush in water again. This is a rainy day, so drips and runs are our friend in this painting. There we go. Quite wet, still running. Can you see that? There we go. That's, that's better. I like that. And even a few streaks going this way is just fine. Just a touch of realism. Let that continue to run down. I'm going to take a real quick break here and take pictures of that and be back in just a... Hello, Amy Rose Fine Art. You caught me on a very unusual day. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but a fun day. All right, I'm looking through my... This is one of my collections of old dead brushes. I let the kids play with them. But I'm looking for... A round. I don't use rounds a lot. You can tell because I don't even see one in here. That might do. That's a really hyper cheap brush. One of those, you know, 10 for a dollar. <laughs> Maybe not. Anyway. All right. And I have added three more colors to our palette. Red, yellow, and phthalo blue. So we're going to start adding some color to this painting finally. And I'm using a fairly small um, round brush, smaller than I want you guys to use, but I want to show you that it can be done with a small brush. Let's start adding some interesting color to this. Now, again, uh, 
dip this brush in water. We want it wet. Then dip it in just a little bit of yellow, not a ton. Don't load it up with yellow, just the tip of it like that. Does that make sense? And this canopy right here, as you can see from our go by, we want that to be yellow. Now it's okay if you go outside the lines a little bit, that's okay. In the real world, things do not happen inside the lines. In the real world, things are messy. And then using the side of that small brush, you know what it's like if you paint under, if you, not, not if you paint, if you stand underneath a colored canopy, you go to a restaurant that has a red canopy and the sun is out, there we go. Everything under that canopy appears red. Does that make sense? So here's a yellow canopy. It colors the air, colors the atmosphere. Underneath the canopy is all yellow. And then I didn't even dip, I didn't even have to re-dip my brush. I just went down here and painted reflection of that yellow. Okay, I think we're done for now with yellow. Now, don't clean your brush. But you can dip it in water if you want, but don't, don't scrub it. It's okay that it has yellow in it. In fact, better if it does. And dip it in red. Again, just a little bit of red. Not very much. Can you see? And let's pick out a couple umbrellas. Let's do this one first. See, that's almost, in my opinion, that's almost too much red. I wish I had a little bit less... Um, paint on my brush. That's too intense in my opinion. But I'm going to, without cleaning it, I'm going to do this umbrella as well. So I'm, I'm thinking we have here two red umbrellas. Now let, before that dries, pick up this brush again. And it should be damp, not dripping wet, but damp. And before this dries, put your brush up there, just drag straight down. Okay, my brush wasn't wet enough. I'm going to dip it in water again. And same thing here. I just want to drag that red color down a little bit. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to dip this brush, just a tiny bit of it. Do you see how small amount that I have on that brush? Let's me mess, mix it on the edge of the plate a little bit, okay? I want reflection of that umbrella. Vertical, vertical, vertical. No angles, no crooked, straight down. Can you do a straight line? Can you do a vertical line? This actually works a lot better, by the way, if you're standing up. And I know most of you are sitting. If, you have, if you're having trouble getting a real vertical line, that's because you're sitting down. It's easy for me right now because I'm standing up. Isn't that funny? All right, let's rinse that brush out and proceed. Continue now. Back to the small brush. And several of these uh, canopies are going to be blue or blue-ish. So what we're going to do is dip, again, dip this in water. You want this brush wet. And just a tiny bit of it in phthalo blue. And let's do this umbrella. And while that's still wet, pick up your damp chip brush and drag it straight down like that. Then dip your small brush in phthalo blue again. And let's do this canopy over here. Now we are not done with these umbrellas or canopies yet, so don't panic too much. And same thing again, just take that wet brush and I'm scrubbing now a little bit, aren't I? Just to get the effect back here a little bit. Okay, now that we've done that, let's get this brush wet again. Pretty wet, you know, so that it, what is pretty wet? It's when you flick it like this, drops come off it. More than damp. If it's damp, it won't drip. I call this pretty wet. And just a tiny corner, that's probably more than I need. Let's rub it on the plate to even it out a little bit. I'm afraid that's a little too much. I really am. So I'm going to, mine's got too much paint. I'm going to dip it 
in water, just one dip, and then rub it on my rag. Or paper towel is probably what you guys have. Okay, let's do some reflection. Straight down. Straight down. I would like it if I could just do this with one stroke like that, but it wasn't, wasn't coming off a lot enough. Now, take your paper towel if you want to, like I do, and say, that's just a little too strong. So I'm rubbing real gently, painting with a rag. We're not getting mad at it and erasing. We're just painting with a rag. Ooh, that's sweet. Are you with me? Wow. So what we did in this session was we did yellow, then reflection, reds running down and reflections, blue running down and reflections. Let's pause there just for a minute. I'm going to take a picture of this and then we'll proceed to do some paint on the people. This is getting fun. All right, it's starting to get fun. <laughs> I hope it's been fun the whole time, honestly. Let's now add some color to these people. Now, I have a habit, whether it's a good habit or not, I won't guarantee. But I have a habit of when I'm putting color on a crowd of people, I always start with who's wearing red. And for some reason, I always start with a woman wearing red. Now, it's real obvious in this painting, <clears throat> that the prominent character is this woman right here. You can hardly tell it's a woman right now, but we won't worry about it. And if you don't want it to be a woman, that's okay. But we're going to put red on her. <coughs> and then a few other people. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to go from there and add a little bit of color here and there. Okay? So here's how we're going to do that. Back to our small brush again. And for the first time in a long time in this painting, we're going to mix colors. So we're going to dip our brush in white, not very much white, about that much, I'm thinking, and then dip it in red so that we get, ooh, a real sickly pink. <laughs> Therefore, a tiny bit of yellow in that will warm that up and make it a prettier pale red. That's, the, that's about, uh, I want a little bit more. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter if we don't all have the same exact color, but I want a fairly intense red. I'm adding more red into mine. But it has white in it because that makes it opaque. All right? Now, how are we going to paint this person? We're going to paint on top of this gray. Now, I'm going to suggest you do like one arm, then the other arm, then her torso in between, leaving little gaps. That'll be the hard part for some of you. I don't want you to cover up this gray completely. I want the gray to peek through here and there. Like in my case, I have gray up here at the top, like inside her two elbows, sort of, at her elbows, and then outside. Does that make sense? Do not be very careful. I don't want you to stick out your tongue, hold your brush like this, and paint in the lines. Painting in the lines is universally what makes a painting bad. And again, not you non-artists, many non-artists think that it's in fact, painting in the lines is what makes a painting good, but it's actually the opposite of that. All right, who else should we make red here? Uh, tell you what, dip your, so we've got this color already mixed up. Let's pick up some more white and make that a pinkish red. Not my favorite color, but let's put this little guy or girl, whichever it is, let's put some pink on her. I think if we, if we do pink, now it's a girl, not a boy. But be that as it may. Same thing. Don't cover up all the gray. The, I know this is going to drive some of you guys crazy, or girls, crazy. Leaving things painting messy. Leaving the gray showing through. Can, am I zoomed in all the way? Let me take you in as close as I can. In fact, hang on a second. I'm going to give you a, a wild ride and bring you in real close. So you can see what I'm talking about, leaving little abstract gaps. Okay, 
I know that's, that's hard for non-artists, many non-artists. Uh, part of the reason some people are good artists is because they've been able to revive the little child inside them. And they're not after sort of a grumpy adult uh, rectitude anymore. <laughs> Can I use that word? <laughs> All right, let's leave the... Uh, <coughs> Leave, sorry about my little cough. <coughs> Let's leave the red behind. Now I rinsed out my brush. And this time again, dip it in white. Start a fresh pile over here and dip it in thalo blue. So now we get a pale blue. That's a really pretty color. And we're going to do some blue on some of these people. Let's do blue on this guy right here. This time I'm going to do like straight down from his neck. And then leaving a little gap, leaving a little tiny gap. Your gaps don't have to look like mine. And this time, let's bring this blue and let it just fade down into his legs. Just a hint of blue. So this person is wearing a blue shirt and blue jeans or something like that. Okay. Speaking of jeans, come over here. Let's paint this guy. And I know you don't have to tell me this isn't this is not exactly jean color, <laughs> but it's close enough. And now I'm thinking, let's do one of these people right here in in blue. Which one? This one, I guess. Okay, so just a stroke. It doesn't. In fact, it's better if you don't cover the whole gray shape. Just just part of it. Anything else? Yep, we're gonna do one more. Let's do this person right here. Same thing again. Push it down, then just let it fade out. Isn't that sweet? All right, what color next? I'm gonna rinse out this brush and we're gonna paint somebody here a different color. Um, <clears throat> green and purple. Those are two colors that we might see on a crowd of people. I paint crowds of people all the time, by the way. I will tell you what color people wear the most. You know what it is? Black or white. But, <laughs> but for a painting, we don't want too much black and white. All right, let's do, um, let's do purple next. So again, dipping my brush in a little bit of white and a little bit of red and a little bit of this ultramarine, not phthalo, different color, the, the grayish blue. I, no, I didn't mean that at all. The purplish blue. There we go. That's what I meant to say. So there we have a, a dull purple. I don't want it too bright. I want it sort of subtle. I don't want this color to just scream out loud. Um, um, let's do it on this woman right here. So a single stroke, just the top half of her. Not the bottom. Oh, and let's do this little kid here. Boy or girl, I don't know. Let's do their legs. Purple. Good enough. I'm going to clean this brush. One more color, and then we might be done with the people. This time, again, dip your brush in white and in green. So we get a pale green. Hang on. I need, I want more green there. All right, there. Now, this person right here in the middle, he's, he's the one that's out here in the rain with no umbrella. Let's do the front edge of his torso. I, I feel like he's walking that way. I don't know about you. And then maybe his arm, just fading out. Don't try to cover the whole thing. Get a little bit under his arm. Now, should we do blue? Should we do uh, green? Yeah, I feel like this guy's gray. We have three gray people. That's a, few, a little bit too many. <clears throat> Tell you what, if you want, you can dip your brush in one of these blues, either one, and mix it up with the green that you just made so we have a nice aqua color. And I'm going to make mine a little bit lighter by adding white to it. So just a, 
an intermediate color. I'm going to put this on this person right there. Hey, and you know what? This is a last minute thought, but I think that'd be a good color on this woman on her legs. Again, not trying to paint all the way down. Just let it, let it fade out. <coughs> all right. I think that works. Now we have more to go, but uh, we've made good progress. Let's pause right there. I'm going to take pictures. I'll be back in just a second. All right. You ready for the grand finale here? We're going to have a f several options in the course of doing this painting. Uh, but for this demo right here, I'm going to stop at a, at a more simplified level. I'm, I'm afraid it's already too complicated, but we're going to try to finish the whole painting right now using nothing but white. Okay, so which brush should we use? We've used basically four brushes. <clears throat> Large, medium, medium small, and very small. Let's, let's make it easy. Let's start with the very small. And we're basically going to do white highlights on several parts of this painting. Okay, so very simple. Dip your brush as you see, I'm twirling it just to get the paint evenly spread. And then I'm going to, it's called training the bristles, getting them all going the right direction. Let's start way here in the back. That very first thing we put on the canvas was we covered up the whole painting, right? But we can see that the roof of this building, I want to paint the sky. You know, the sky gets lighter as you get closer to the horizon. You're aware of that, I'm sure. So I'm going to fairly carefully color in the lines and trace the, uh, the top of that distant building, a building at the end of the street. And then letting the paint get thinner and thinner and thinner on my brush, I just, I'm fading up. Do you see? Now it looks a little bit more like sky, doesn't it? Plus we got rid of that outline line that was there. Now, while we're still in that area, Take your brush and do a single thin stroke, thin, 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 across like that. That's reflection of the street, reflection of the water on the street. In fact, since we've done one, let's do two. We, there might be a line there on your canvas. Cover up that line. Now you notice how thin and airy my stroke is. You do not need, let me find a piece of scrap paper again. No, I'll use a, a clipboard. When you draw a line with a paintbrush, you do not need to push the bristles onto the canvas and drag, that is not a line. That's a, that's a, that's a, a <laughs> you just painted a square. Here's a line. Do you see the difference? You do not need to go like this, mashing the bristles down, okay? I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off the back of that clipboard. All right, so that's what I did. Just a couple easy, easy strokes. Now, while we're back here, let's do something really fun. Just a few dots of white in this tree. Not many. There, about four. That's, I'm done. Let me zoom in real, real tight so you can see how much I did right there. See, I did one, two, three, four. Oh, maybe this is another one here, but I'm going to blend it out, actually. Blend it into the sky that I did earlier. I hope I'm not getting too, too complicated. But just a, those few dots give the impression that the bright light close to the horizon is just peeking through the foliage of that tree. Where do we go now? Oh, this is going to be fun. Let's take care, first of all, of these the stripes. Only, only one of these umbrellas is going to get any stripes in it. Start near the center and come down and get wider like that. Same thing over here. Start at the top and do a little triangle that's leaning over. Let me draw that for you. The shape I did here was a triangle leaning that way, a shark fin. <laughs> and the, the one going the other way, same thing, shark going the other direction. And just let the red 
peek through in between those strokes. If you want, I'm going to add just a, one more edge to that there. So that's the only fancy umbrella in the whole painting. Now this blue umbrella, it's raining out. The umbrella is wet. Therefore, the top of it is reflecting water. Same thing over here. I should, that I didn't make sense, did it? It's reflecting water. It's wet, so it's reflecting the sky. That makes sense? All right, now. I'm dipping, I just dipped this brush in water because I wanted it a little bit wetter than it was. Now we're going to start doing some of the most fun part of this whole painting, which is the little spots of light that are reflecting between these people, between the people, between their legs, and so forth. Okay, so for instance, let's say between this man's legs, put your brush down and then just drag it straight down. You can go slowly if you want and let it fade out. Okay, now you might be wondering, well, I don't get it. That doesn't look like anything. I know it's because there's only one, but when we get a whole bunch of them, it'll begin to make sense. Now between the man and the woman, I'm thinking that's a man, that's a woman. You can do whatever you want. And starting a little higher this time, even and maybe a little thinner, one stroke straight down, straight, straight, straight down. And as I said earlier, it's easier to do vertical or horizontal marks when you're standing up. So I know probably most of you are sitting down. If, if you want to get this more correct, just stand up for a minute. Now, to the right of this woman, I want to shave her. This is a funny, that it, that I'm going to shave her legs. That I did not mean to say that at all. But it came out that way, okay? So I'm just dragging, let it fade, 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 fade. There, I just made the bottom part of her leg a little bit skinnier, so I shaved off part of her leg. Same thing with the little kid here. Put a little right between his legs or her legs. Just drag down and stop real quick. Does that make sense? What we're doing here is called negative painting. That means we're not painting the object. We're painting what is not the object. In this case, what is not the figures, what is not the people, we're painting around them. Same thing, I'm gonna shave some off this little kid's leg over here. Now because his legs, his or her legs at an angle, I'm gonna to have to begin this stroke at an angle till I get down here to the, to the end of the leg and then I drag straight down. Does that make sense? And if you've painted an arm like I have, then you have to stop before you get to the arm. Let's do another stroke right beside that one, but leaving a little space. And another one, leaving a little tiny gap. And one more, fade each one, get this one getting a little shorter. Do you see what's happening there? Now we're getting the suggestion of like a, a crosswalk or there's some kind of break in the pavement <clears throat> that makes it look a little bit more like a road. Isn't this fun? Let's go over to this guy here. Starting on the front of this leg. And of course, we can't come down very far because there's a foot in the way. But you can skip the foot and then drag on down a little bit like that. And another one, this one really short and a tiny bit right there. <clears throat> now, you, this will not work if you make your lines go this way. Part of the magic here is making all of these strokes vertical. That's what makes it look like reflection. Same thing here, drag straight down and fade out about where the, the Y comes together. A little dot there because his foot comes in the way, and a real short stroke there. Try to resist the temptation to stick out your tongue, hike up and start painting all like this. That won't work. It will not have a good feel if you paint that way. Same here, now the back side of his leg. Let's drag this one down a good bit more. And at least one more of those right next to it. And this time I'm gonna make them overlap. 
and drag down pretty far. Ah, sure, let's do one more, take it all the way to the edge of the canvas. There we go. Are you catching on now? Let's go over here now to, we started with this right in the middle of his legs, let's go over this way. And on a same line, same level, I'm gonna shave a little bit off his leg. Just drag straight down. I can go pretty far with this one. <clears throat> we don't want these reflections to all stop at the same point. We want some long, some short. Let's do uh, right next to that one, overlapping a little bit. Hang on, I need more paint on my brush, so I turn my brush over. There we go. <clears throat> what do you think? Is yours starting to look like a, like a rainy street? Mine sure is. I hope yours is too. I'm leaving a gap there. I'm not sure if that's a foot or just a shadow. But definitely leaving a gap here. See, that's the reflection of, of one leg. And the back of his leg or her leg, I don't know which this is. And drag down, we can drag this one down pretty far. Isn't that fun? Let's do just a little bit more. One, two, three, and all the way to this woman. There we go. Now at any point, say if you find that you're, these are too uniform, you could pick up a damp, is it damp or wet? No, it's wet. And drag down to make your reflections even more fluid or liquid. <laughs> Isn't it convenient that when you're painting a wet street that using wet paint actually aids in the illusion of wetness? All right, we're all the way over to this woman, the star of the show, right between her legs very carefully, straight down. And I can probably get away with just one stroke, just like that. And then to the other side of her leg, one stroke. And it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, I'm gonna do double stroke there and a triple. So I'm doing side by side by side. Each one's getting a little bit shorter. It doesn't bother me at all that I can't tell exactly where her legs end and the reflection starts. In fact, that's actually quite charming that I don't know where her feet are. They're in here somewhere, but I like the fact that I can't tell exactly where they are. You doing okay? Let's continue. Now back up to the top of this canopy. Let's, again, the light, remember, is coming more or less from our right. Let's make an indication of that by painting the front edge of this canopy white. And this should actually be a real thin triangle shape. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. And let's do exactly the same thing here. on this red, uh, red, once again, I'm colorblind, on this blue canopy. Okay, so this is a very definite triangle. You see that? And here I am going to color in the lines, just gonna color all that in. And then the front edge of the canopy, like that. And it's, do you see how I let some of that blue peek through? That's really sweet, just to leave it just like that. We're nearly finished. We'll come back and do some optional extra things to this, to this painting. But if this is all we have time to do, this is fine. Let's do some white underneath this yellow canopy. Just let it fade quickly. So you see, I'm coming up to the edge of the canopy, dragging my brush down and let it fade quite quickly. Let's do some over here as well. There. Uh, let's do a little bit more. I'm leaving, gonna leave a gap right here to indicate the leg of that canopy. It might be a little bit too much detail for some of you, but I think you can handle it. Do you see I've got a 
I didn't paint the leg, I just let it show through by painting around it. Now, just one more thing that I'm positive about, and that is this, the table, if you will, that, that is in this canopy. I'm going to cover up the, the line that I drew earlier with white. And then leaving a little gap that is a gap at underneath that stroke. I'm going to draw a line straight down. So this is like a white tablecloth draped over a table like at, you see at a art festival. Does that make sense? Again, leaving a gap there for the leg of that canopy. Now, I don't, yours might not be like this, but this guy right here, or gal, I don't know what it is, her, his or her legs are really tight together, so I'm going to do a little light in between them. Now, if there's a white table there, what is there going to be on the sidewalk underneath it? That's right, a reflection of the white table. So we drag this down. Again, leave a little gap right here to indicate where the tablecloth ends and leave a gap where there's a reflection of this figure. Leave a gap here where there's a reflection of the leg of the canopy. Are you with me? Everything leaves a reflection. And all the reflections fade. All right, isn't that sweet? We could call that finished. We really, really could. In fact, I'm gonna take a quick break here. And when we come back, I'm going to do some of the optional extras, okay? I don't know if you will have time or we will have time in the class to go beyond this. But if we do, I wanna show you what we could do next, okay? But this is good enough. We could sign that and say we've had a good time and that's done. So quick break here. Be back in just a minute. <laughs> All right. Hi. <laughs> Hello, King Harry. <laughs> Thank you for that greeting. Once again, for perhaps some of you who just joined me, this is in preparation for one of those social wine and design uh, classes I'm going to lead in a couple weeks where I have a number of people who are not artists at all trying to do a simple painting. All right, so this is extra credit. Um, I don't want to ruin <laughs> what we've just done. So proceed with caution. Let's see what we can do. Well, the first thing that we could do is add some flesh tones to some of these, <coughs> some of these figures. <coughs> oh, pardon the bad cough. All right, our smallest brush again, dip it in three colors, white, well, four colors probably, red, yellow, let's see how that looks. See that, now that might work just fine, and brown. Okay, so that's, that's a pretty good flesh tone. And of course, here we, <laughs> we have to get into some racial sensitivity. Whose flesh are we talking about? <laughs> and I want you to know that as an artist, I think about that every time I do a crowd of people and I'm always careful to make sure because I want people to feel like they're seeing themselves in the painting. So this is a, a medium dark brown. And the most obvious character that could use some flesh tone would be this character right here. And what I'm doing, let me, let me pick you up again, give you a wild ride, let you see this up close. So I'm allowing the gray smudge to remain visible on both sides of that brown smudge. Does that make sense? Same color now. How about two hands with one stroke right here? Boom. Whoop, that's too big. I'm going to scratch part of that off. There we go. That's all right. There. Now you see it kind of looks like she's holding an umbrella in front of her. That makes sense. Now I'm going to mix up some white with this brown just to get a variety of flesh tones. Okay, so a little bit lighter now. Let's do this child. Again, don't cover the whole gray. Leave the top part showing. 
to indicate hair, perhaps, and do the face. At the same token, do an arm. Don't try to cover up the whole gray smudge. And let's do the other hand right here. Perfect. I'm going to add, a, again, a little bit more white to this brown. Let's do the, the mother, I feel like, right here, right? And the father. Th in this case, now, so far I've been putting the, the brown right in the middle of the gray smudge. On the father, let's have him looking this way toward his family. So we leave this side of the gray smudge un uncovered and do the brown smudge to the right side. So not in the middle, but to the right. Not at the top either, because it's a little bit of hair. There we go. My brush accidentally went a little high, so I'm going to rub it off, scratch it off with a... Now, where should we put his hands? Well, let's put them right here. He's also holding his umbrella right in front of him. So just a little dot indicates hands. What about the mom here? Let's put one hand right there. Just a touch. Just a touch. That's the same thing. This person, I think, is walking that way. So we, we put the, the brown smudge in the lower right-hand side of the gray smudge. That turns the gray smudge more or less into hair. And then at the, just a tiny dot at the end of that arm, and maybe a tiny dot here for the hand on the other side. Isn't it amazing how these subtle, subtle changes, I'm gonna, again, going to mix up a little bit of uh, white with that brown just for variety. Isn't it amazing how these tiny touches Okay, now this person walking this way. So we do this brown smudge in the lower left side of the gray smudge. Leave some gray at the top and leave some gray on the right. And there we go, we have a person. Now what about their hands? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. Let's just keep it simple. Right there in the middle. There they are holding an umbrella right in front of them. Just a couple of real simple dots over here. We don't need to do any to these people, but we can if we want to. The biggest danger here is making these smudges too large. Is it too late to say that? And then we can do a tiny dot for a couple hands. One hand, a person has, you know, people move their arms. They're not all hanging down at their sides. There, I feel like if we do any more, we'll be getting in trouble. So there's some flesh tones. Now here's a good trick if you want. After having done a certain color, you can come back and do a lighter color on part of their, the first smudge. I'm going to smear that a little bit. There we go. Does that make sense? You can go back and do that to any of these that you want to. A smaller smudge on top of the earlier, darker one. A smaller, lighter smudge on top of the earlier darker one. That really gives it a sense of dimensionality. <clears throat> yep, I think that's a good place to take a quick break. I have to take pictures of this for my class that I'll be leading in a couple weeks. I want them to be able to see each step of the process. So real short break, I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so this is extracurricular phase two. We can put more interesting reflection in this street if we want to. It's not mandatory, but let's experiment a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the second brush I used, which is about a half inch wide. It's a number eight flat. And I want that brush, again, to be damp. I'm going to dip it in my white paint. And we're going to add some reflections um, where? Right about here, I think. Flat, drag, and fade. Another one right beside it, overlapping slightly. Drag and fade. Then a little gap using my brush on the side. Drag and fade. And then right next to that one, leaving a little gap. And let's overlap that. See, what I want is these, these stripes to be of various width. We don't want them to be the same width. For some reason, 
People don't like to see that the artist used a brush of any given width and then that the artist used that brush over and over and over again. We don't like redundancy. So I'm going to do a third, another stroke overlapping the first two. So that's a, see my widest. And let's leave a little gap and use the brush on the, on the edge. Now at any point, we can pick up our wide brush and brushing straight down. Make that fade out even a little bit more if we want to. Does it make sense? Let's do another skinny, even skinnier if we can, just by using even less pressure. And then, then a short one. You don't have to do the same strokes that I'm doing, but you have to understand the concept that we want all different widths. There, I think that's good enough. I'm going to let it fade out. I'm not going to carry it all the way to the edge. And then I, again, I'm going to, not re see, I'm not going sideways. I'm going all straight up and down to create even more of a reflection there. Now let's come over this. Let's leave a bigger gap here. Come all the way over here. and sort of fading out, do you see? Okay, so again, that just, that gives the impression that there's a, a break in the pavement or there's a break in the building, the reflection of some, in some way. And um, the beauty of this painting is the play of light, the way the light plays on the water. I know, in a way, all of this stuff up here is just an excuse for the reflection that we see on the street. Isn't that fun? I think that's a good place to stop right there. If we can get our people to go that far, we'll have done a good job. So I'm going to stop in this broadcast right here as well. Again, thank you for joining me for this very unusual uh, step. Um, I'll do, I'm going to decide after the broadcast is over if, if I personally want to do anything else to this. I might. Well, for instance, here. Here, now I'll keep the broadcast going for a minute. I introduced them to the idea of using a pencil earlier. We could come back and do that again. Just a straight stroke for an umbrella handle in a couple places. And... So this is extracurricular level number three. Ooh, I'm liking it. There are a lot of vertical shapes on a city street. Street lights, um, lamp posts, you know, no parking signs, all kinds of things, all kinds of vertical streaks. And I'm frankly kind of liking this a little bit. And then we could reemphasize the curb if we want to. Again, this is all extra credit. You do not need to do this at all. I'm going to add a little line to the bottom of this guy's umbrella and the, and the bottom of this canopy. And a couple more vertical strokes. I don't even know what these vertical strokes are. It doesn't matter. It just looks like reflections of a city. Yeah, I like that. So again, I don't know if we, I will have you guys do that or not in the class, but if you have any bandwidth left over, after everything's done, I think that was that was kind of nice. Ah, okay. <laughs> now that I've gotten myself in this much trouble, I'm going to get myself a little bit more. So I'm going to pause here. I guess I'm going to keep the broadcast going for a few minutes, you guys. After I do those black lines, which I like quite a bit, I realized I want to do another trick, which is uh, take a piece of thick paper and dip it in white paint and make some verticals. But that'll be the next 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 section. So this has gone on a little bit longer than I thought for some, some painting tricks. By the way, this is a good trick no matter how you're painting. I have here a piece of um, thick paper. Uh, a three by five card would be perfect. And I'm simply gonna cut it 
hopefully straight. I, I want these cuts to be straight because this will work better. But I want just a little stack of miniature cards, I guess you would call it. And now it's time for me to put a little fresh white paint on my plate. Now all of this is dry in the middle. So that, that allows me to do a strip of white, something like that. What we're going to do is dip the, the edge of this card into this paint. Tap, 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 tap. And then maybe, you know, even it out over there. Now part of the charm of this technique is we don't know exactly what kind of mark this is going to make. Okay, but we can do anywhere we want a vertical stroke. And then if you're like me, which you're not, but <laughs> you're going to want to make that a little bit more amorphous or abstract. So we just stretch it out like that. What is that a reflection of? The answer is heck if I know. It's just reflection of all kinds of vertical marks. There's another one. I'm going to do basically up here in the sky. Now, whoops. Now, what do you do if you accidentally do one that's crooked? Hang on. I've got a damp rag here. I don't usually approve of erasing. <laughs> but in this case, it's an exception. We don't want lampposts that are leaning over. <laughs> so let's get this one straight. There we go. Can we do it even taller? Maybe. There. Now, I would strongly advise against trying to paint a lamp on top of that. No, no, no. Just let the post speak for itself. All different heights. And I don't like this bottom part, so I'm going to wipe that out. Now, I'm going to throw that card, dispose of that one, because I, now I want some short stripe white lines short white line. So now you're using the short ends of the card. Does it make sense? And this might be legs of the canopy way back there in the background. I'm going to do this this woman's um, umbrella post right there. I don't even have to do the top part. That's in shade. You see? I can do a very similar thing back here to this man's umbrella handle. And then if there's all these white lines up here, let's do, I like the light, the lamppost idea. And if there's lampposts up there, then there's going to be reflections down here. In fact, you can even, if you're feeling brave, you can drag it a little bit. And as you see, I just rubbed it out with my finger a little bit. All right, I almost feel like this is too much of a good thing, <laughs> which is easy to do. I'm going to do one more, the, a leg of this uh, canopy right there. And all this is optional. I didn't use a fraction of my cards, but that's good enough. All right, <laughs> now I really am done. I'm calling that done. All of those white lines, again, are optional. Me and the team at Wine & Design will decide if we want to include that or not. Again, thank you for watching. I hope to be downstairs in my garage shortly painting my real, my real painting, my big seven foot painting. And I hope you can join me down there. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, let me see if you guys, yeah, there's a lot of chats here. Hang on, boy, I've not been paying any attention. And there sure are a lot. And thanks for letting me know about the bad, bad audio earlier. Okay, it seems that that's all the chat I've got.